Hello everyone, we are out here in the field today doing some of our fall food plots. As you can see, it looks pretty gray. We got rain coming, fingers crossed. So what we're out here doing is we're getting some of the fall food plots in today. And we're in a food plot we call Greg's Food Plot. The center section was wheat, fed the deer really well. Didn't really turn on the seed heads because it was an on variety. Um, but again, we got that brush hog down and we got a spray on this just yesterday. Spreading our seed right into it. As you can see, this will be a nice layer of thatch too. That will come right up through. We got a little bit of wheat here which we might have to go over with a cleft and kill this so we don't have a lot of competition for our, our grains because this might just be a little heavy here. As you can see, we got clover, turnips, clover's the white mixed in with it, some radish in there as well, a little bit of wheat. We're going to have some volunteer wheat out here. We might have to control, so we'll see how it goes, see how this plot's looking. This will probably be a little stunted here in the center, but CJ's running the new crimper packer that I got from my buddy John Teeter. As you can see, leveled that buckwheat off. Perfect. We had a little bit of goldenrod in there. I did spray that yesterday already and then crimped it um, just because there was some uh, goldenrod and stuff coming up in it from just some residual in the seed bed. And then again, spray over this so we got this nice weed free base. As you can see, just a little bit of green, but any of this green will be torched off um, going forward. So we just did the other food plot you see right through this hedgerow. This was completely tall. You know, you couldn't even see the power lines here last year before I went through and wipe that out if you want to look at our YouTube video, the build a wall video. That's what that one's referencing right there. That's what we did there. And as you can see here, brass, uh, buckwheat had a lot of grass in this. So again, this was sprayed too yesterday. Get a kill on it and then we're just crimping it down, laying that stuff nice and flat. Um, we're going to go over this stuff twice. This has been over just once with that crimper packer. And as you can see, laid it right down really, really nice. So. CJ is saving me a ton of time. I mean, this plot alone took me about 20 minutes to spin the seed out, like setting my seed gate low. That way I could go over it once, and this an orientation going north-south, and then I turned and went east-west with it. Um, and that way I get really good even coverage with this. This sets up a couple different stand locations around this plot, but I'm really hoping to get a crack at the buck we call Hacksaw this year in and around this plot. He loved this area last year, was a regular on this food plot, so we'll see if we can capitalize on it because we had them on a trail camera location not too far from here very regular very daylight very predictable we'll probably hunt him on a one-year rule going forward so that crimper packer working great laying stuff down getting us a nice nice leveled off uh, seed bed so to speak laying a nice mulch layer of buckwheat down over the top again we sprayed it because we had some weeds in here goldenrod might even be a little mare's tail some pigweed in here some of this we might have to come back in and hand pull because I don't even know if the glide is going to kill it. But it's so sporadic that I can come back through here really quick um, right before it seeds, pluck it or cut it, and then that way we'll have a good thing. But you can see even that crimper is doing a number of clipping this golden rod. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm really glad I sprayed this. We've got some crab grass and other stuff coming up in this. So that's key, guys, with any of your applications. Uh, I'll go take a walk over on. Um, Corey's real quick and you can see that. So that's Corey's plot, this is Greg's plot, just named throughout history. We name a lot of our stuff after some of the people that were here hunting before or wherever it might be. So it sounds like CJ's just wrapping up. So that's what we got going on. All good? Sweet, sweet? Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably run it right down the grass on the shoulder going back to mom and dad's. And then that way we'll get there and we'll hose it off. Because the other stuff's over by mom and dad's house, so okay. I wouldn't take it on the road. <laughs> just right on the edge of the road. Yeah, it'd be a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd take it just down the edge of the road there and then just cut across right at the last bit there. Okay. So. Whew. <laughs> It's around, man. <laughs> it's around. But as you can see, sorry about that. This plot was all buckwheat. And look at the lay down that this got here. Absolutely phenomenal. This came in a lot thicker, a lot better. Might have overseeded this, so we might adjust our seed rate to get up around 60 with this. But this is perfect. We had, like you see, very little minimum weed competition, a little bit of plantain, 
but that's okay. We didn't spray this as our control for that new roller crimper, see how it's doing, but you can see that radish is down there, clover's down there real nice. I'm sure there's some purple top in here, but that's really hard to see with the with the dark color, more crimson, and I put that in there to get a little bit of difference around that blend with it. So that's what we're doing today, guys. Crimper experimenting on Greg's without a spray, or Corey's rather, without a spray, and then Greg's has been sprayed and then crimped. Got a couple more plots to do today, and uh, stay tuned for more updates with it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch y'all next time here in the field. Look at that annual screen.